Patriot Prime Reviews is a channel for adult collectors and may not be suitable for children under 13 years of age. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey, what's going on guys? Patriot Prime here once again with another Transformers review. But before I get started, I need you guys to do me a favor. If you're watching this video right here and are not a subscriber of Patriot Prime Reviews, please consider hitting that subscribe button right now. It won't cost you a thing, but will help me and my channel out tremendously. Also, make sure and check out the sponsor of this video, ToyHacks.com. Hi, I'm Bert the Stormtrooper, and this is the Legacy Generation 2 Laser Optimus Prime, and I love this toy. But he's missing that Generation 2 look, that colorfulness that the original toy had. Hey, Bert! <laughs> Hey, Patriot Prime, where did you come from? It's the internet, man. Anything's possible. Here, put these ToyHacks.com decals on your Laser Optimus Prime. I think you'll get that G2 look that you're looking for. Whoa, dude, you got to show me how you do that. All right, awesome. Let me put these on and uh, let me get right back with you. A few moments later... Holy crap, Laser Prime now looks amazing. He looks just like the original toy, thanks to Toy Hacks, and thanks to you, Patriot Prime. You are welcome. Not only does Toy Hacks make decals for the modern Transformer figures, but they also make reproduction decals for the vintage G1s. Check out their toy stages to find a cool backdrop for your collection display and visit the Toy Hacks Armory. They have a wide variety of weapons in multiple colors. And don't forget, each purchase with ToyHacks.com adds RoboSense to your account that you can use for future purchases. So check out ToyHacks.com and make your collection stand out from the rest. And don't forget, tell them Patriot Prime sent you. The featured bot in this video is the brand new Transformers Legacy G-Axis. And this was one figure I was so excited to see when he was announced. While some other Transformer fans were like, who the hell's this guy? Well, G-Axis here was written specifically by writer Simon Furman for the G2 Marvel comic series. There was no toy of the figure. He was written specifically for the comic book. And a funny story is Marvel told Simon Furman, says, yeah, we want you to do this new comic, but we'll probably cancel it after 12 issues. And so Simon Furman named G-Axis G-Axis because it's kind of a play on words, G-Axis, you know, we're can getting canceled, G-Axis. So that's where his name came from. He was the primary antagonist in the G2 comic series against both Optimus Prime and Megatron. He was a dictator that took a group of Decepticons, who they renamed themselves the Cybertronians, and they were off conquering the galaxy while Optimus Prime and Megatron were having their little dust up here on Earth. So once he came back to Earth, discovered Optimus Prime and Megatron, big battle raged, and the two had to team up to fight him. So enough of me rambling on about the figure. If you're not familiar with this guy, Highly, highly recommend that you track down the G2 Marvel series. I know Titan Books did a couple of graphic novel reprints of the entire series. I have those, and you can get them for like 10 bucks on eBay. Highly recommended. So enough of me just rambling on about the comic history of G-Axis. Let's go ahead and take a look at the figure. And welcome to Patriot Prime Reviews. <laughs> Okay, I screwed up. I forgot to show off G-Axis's packaging in the intro. I was too busy talking about his comic book history. Anyway, here's the box. No window right there, plastic free. You've got G-Axis in his Cybertronian jet mode. Here we have G2 Universe G-Axis. Side of the box, we've got art of G-Axis right there. It looks really good, very faithful to how he looked in the comics. On the back of the packaging, we've got G-Axis in robot mode jet mode and then there's that qr scanner that you can scan to get his tech specs and then the side of the box right here is the art we've seen many times with megatron drag strip iguanas 
sky warp, and kickback. So now let's take a look at what you get when you get G-axis all opened up out of the packaging. You get a set of instructions that, as usual, are very well illustrated and easy to follow. He also gets this thin little silver blaster, and it's actually clear plastic painted silver. So it doesn't look too bad, but my gosh, that is thin. And then he has this red blaster that looks a lot better. I like the size of this more, but I wish it had some paint applications. Now you can take the mega thin blaster and attach to the red one there on the side to form kind of like a double blaster. And then this one also has a port on the back. So if you take a weapon, say like the ax from skids here, and there you go. So now you got some kind of mega rifle. So there's one option. I guess there's all kinds of stuff you can do with that. And of course we have G axis himself. My first impressions with G axis when I got him out of the packaging was wow, this guy looks so good and looks exactly like his G2 comic counterpart. Now this isn't the first G axis figure that we've gotten. We got one way back in 2003 in the Robots in Disguise series as a KB exclusive repaint of Beast Machine's Jetstorm. And then in the Thrill in 30 line, I believe in 2013, we got a version of him using the Armada Starscream mold, but that was based upon his IDW appearance, where he is more of a scientist instead of a brutal conqueror. So I prefer the Marvel version. So taking a closer look at the figure, he's got a fantastic head sculpt. He just looks so mean and just very evil figure. I love the green eyes, the yellow face. Never could figure out if that was a chin strap or what on his helmet there, but it looks good. Paint applications are off the chain. He's got his sensor array right there on his shoulder with some green in the middle. Yellow for the chest, a little bit of white right here. He's got a G2 Decepticon insignia on his chest. You know, in the comics, he wasn't a Decepticon. As I said, he led a force called the Cybertronians. No real paint applications for the figure until we get down here on the legs where he's got some yellow. And look at the sculpted detail right there on the shins with the wires. That looks awesome. That's, just, that's great looking right there. I dig it. Got these little wings on the side of the legs. Also very faithful to the comics. A little bit of yellow up there on the knees, yellow for the feet, yellow fists. And that's about it. The figure cleans up really, really good. There's no waffles anywhere to be seen. So this guy looks awesome. Now, as far as articulation, the head is on a ball joint. Can look up, can look down. Do a complete 360 though. Once I turn it a little bit to the side, it gets loose right there. I mean, it's not bad. It's not going to just flop around, but it gets a little looser as soon as you turn it to the side. So you got that going on. The arms can go out. They can go in. They could do a complete 360, except you're going to hit the wings back there. There is a bicep rotation, bicep bend, let's see, wrist rotation, and the fingers, I believe, that's very tight. There's a pin. Yes, the fingers can open and close. There is a waist rotation. Legs can go forward. They can go back. There's a very deep knee bend, a rotation, and ankle tilt. So he's got lots of posability. Let's go ahead and grab his weapons. We got his red blaster right here. Go ahead and peg that into his hand. I'm not real sure why his fingers open up, because you really don't have to open up the fingers to put the weapons in. But it's still cool, a cool feature. So there we go, dual wielding. Now that's exactly how he looked in the comics. He had these big blasters he carried into battle. So there you have G2G axis, all armed and ready for battle. So now let's get G axis transformed into his Cybertronian jet mode. And the first thing we're gonna do, go ahead and remove the blasters. And then we'll take these little panels right here, flip these out. If I can get them, there we go. Flip those down, 
fold the fist inside. Go ahead and rotate the waist. I'm going to flip the wings back and then take this whole section, pull down, that'll release the head. And you'll want to rotate the head around and go ahead and collapse that down like so. Then you're going to reach in and pull up his chest section just like that. Go ahead and take the sensor array, kind of fold in, bring this chest section up, fold out the nose cone of the jet and click that into place. When you bring this out, you're still going to rotate that little sensor array so it's angled just like that. Then you're going to bring this section down and it's going to tab into place just like so. Go ahead and straighten the arms out and you're going to fold these sections in right where this yellow piece is. Make sure the head is looking forward. Fold those in like so. Now we're going to go down here to the legs. Open up the legs just like this. This kind of reminds me of the old uh, Combiner Wars figures. Take the feet, fold the feet down, and then just kind of collapse the leg onto itself just like that. Now, flip this section here around just like so, and you got these little tabs right here that you're going to line up to the tabs behind his knees. So go ahead and let's get, whoops, forget this every time. There is the tail fin right here on the inside of the leg. Go ahead and rotate that around. I've transformed this guy a few times. I've missed that every time. Now go ahead and snap those legs into place and snap the legs together. You're going to bring the arms down. There's those little green hinges. Pop these out and you're gonna bring these down and the arms are gonna tab in right here to the leg. So get that tabbed in, get that tabbed in. You're gonna take the little ankle wings, fold those up in under the vehicle mode. Take the wings here rotate these around you'll have to lift out slightly they peg in right there so lift out slightly bring those around go ahead and bring out or unfold rotate rather the wing here unfold the wing and now you got this little slot right here or the slots right there it's going to go onto that peg onto the side of the leg and do that for both sides and there we have Giaxis in his Cybertronian jet mode and this thing if the tail fin will stay pegged together is near identical to how he looked in the comics it's a very weird looking Cybertronian jet and that's just how he was in the comics too I dig it I kind of like the organic bat wing look to the wings there. The details from the legs carry over. There's no real new details to look at in the jet mode aside from the cockpit. You got a translucent cockpit all the way to the nose cone. And if you can see right there, that is Giaxis's head. So you do want to make sure and rotate the head around or he's going to be looking at you through the cockpit. Streamlines up pretty good. I mean, I wish Something could have been done with the little foot wing or the ankle wings there, but I guess you could fold those up like so. Doesn't look too bad that way. There's no landing gear whatsoever, but he sits perfectly fine. Now the weapons, you can attach the weapons right there under the nose cone and take the fin blaster. Nick and peg in either side here. So you've got that look going on or take the blaster off and you can actually peg it in to the side just like I shown earlier. Now one fault with the Cybertronian jet mode, he's got a very ugly gap right there. So not a big fan of that. But what you could do is rotate the gun around. Let's see, peg it this way. kind of hide that 
and then you can take the other blaster and peg it in right there like so so you've got that look going on but it doesn't look near as good so it may be something you just have to deal with I'm sure some 3d printing wizard will come up with something that can hide that spot right there so there you go guys there you have g-axis in his cybertronian jet mode and now for some quick size comparisons here is transformers legacy g-axis with generation selects g2 megatron with larkin's lair upgrades generation selects g2 ramjet and legacy laser optimus prime with toy hacks decals Transformers Legacy G-Axis was a very pleasant surprise. Never in a million years would I have thought that we would get a figure based on the 1994 comic book villain. This guy not only took me by surprise, but a lot of other Transformer fans as well. And he actually ended up being a great Transformers figure. I love the robot mode and I love the jet mode. The only complaint is the big gap underneath the cockpit. Other than that, this is an awesome figure that I have waited almost 30 years for. So there you go, guys. Transformers Legacy G-Axis. So, does the Transformers Legacy G-Axis belong in your collection? Absolutely. I love this figure, and I think you guys will too. Even if you're not familiar with the character at all, this is amazing Transformers toy, and I am still just shocked that we have him. Finally, after all these years, we have an outstanding representation of G-Axis from the Generation 2 comics. Now, hopefully, we can get a Lord Straxus to go along with him. So yeah, we've got a great robot mode here, great vehicle mode, fun transformation. This guy is a ton of fun. So if you see G-Axis on the shelf, pick him up. You are not going to be disappointed. Now guys, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to click that bell icon to get notified when I upload new videos. Also, if you're in any position to help out the channel, I have a new super thanks button, thanks to YouTube, and I also offer channel memberships. And I wanna give a huge shout out to all my current channel members because it's support like yours that helps keep this channel growing. Once again, guys, this is Patriot Prime, signing out. Hoorah!